Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous videos, we were doing this relational algebra operations using MapReduce. We have successfully completed selection, projection, union, intersection, difference operations. Now, we will be doing the next operation which is again an important one which is known as natural join. So, let's start with natural join algorithm. But before that, let me tell you what natural join means. So, let's say if we have two tables, table 1 and table 2, and if these two tables contains a common attribute between them. So, we can successfully join these two tables, table 1 and table 2, with respect to that common attribute. Now, how we can do this? Let's see with the help of algorithm. So, in the map reduce algorithm, there are majorly two tasks. First is the map and second is the reduce. So first we'll focus on the map task. In the map task first we will check with the help of an if condition whether the relation is R or S. R is your table 1 and S is your table 2. If the relation is R, then we'll iterate over all the values inside that relation R and we'll be emitting the key value pairs in the form of B, comma the tuple r comma a put one thing that b here is the common attribute between the table 1 and table 2 where table 1 contains the attributes a and b and table 2 contains the attributes b and c so if the condition says that the current relation is r then we'll be emitting the key in the form of b and the value in the form of r comma a otherwise if the relation is s then we'll be emitting the key as b and the value as s comma c so that was about the map task. Now we'll come to the reduce task. In the reduce task, we'll be making two lists. First list will contain all the values that comes under any uncommon attribute which is present inside the relation R. So we'll be iterating over all the values and we'll check if the current relation is R and if the attribute of the current value is not common between the two relations, then we'll append it in the list of relation R. Similarly, we have to form a list for the relation S. It will contain only those values for which the attribute is uncommon between the two tables. And once we are done with the two list, we'll be iterating our first list and we'll be iterating our second list simultaneously. And finally, we'll be emitting the key value pairs in the form of key comma. The value will be a tuple of three elements, which is A, that is the uncommon attribute from the first relation comma key comma c and that was the algorithm if you haven't understood the algorithm don't worry we'll be looking this particular example and we'll solving this particular example step by step with the help of that algorithm and finally at the end of this particular video you'll be clear with all the concepts so let's start so first we can see that in the first map worker we have the attribute b common in both the tables similarly for map worker 2 now if we look at the first record the first and the second table then we can clearly see that the value that is coming under the b attribute is common between these two tables which is nothing but two so we can simply join these two records from these two tables with respect to that value which is common this particular concept is called as natural join so now we have to do this with the help of this map reduce algorithm so first i will clear one thing that r is your t1 that is table 1 and s is your t2 that is table 2. So first task is to convert all these records in the form of key value pairs. The key will be the value which comes under the attribute which is common between these two tables and the value will be a tuple which will contain the relation comma the value which comes under the attribute which is not common between the two tables. So let's begin with the very first step. As we know that both the map workers will be running simultaneously. Both the map workers will be containing key value tables. So let me quickly create the structure of this particular step. So as you can see, the structure for this particular step has got created. Now the common attribute is B. And if you look at the first record, the record contains 1 and 2 as the values. So since B is the common attribute, it will be coming under the key section so we'll write 2 under the key and inside the value we have to write the relation r which is nothing but t1 over here so we are writing t1 comma 
the value which is coming under uncommon attribute which is a so the value that is coming under a is 1 so we have written t1 comma 1 if you look at table 2 you can clearly see that the value under b attribute is again 2 so we can club two records with a single key hence we can write the relation that is t2 comma the value that is coming under an uncommon attribute which is c so it is nothing but 3 so we have written t2 comma 3 i hope it is clear so if you look at the second record it is 2 comma 3 so 3 is coming under b so we'll write it in the key section and next we have the value section under which we'll write t1 comma 2 and similarly we have 4 as the common attribute from the next table so we'll write t2 comma 4 now if we look at the third record between the two tables the value coming under the common attribute is common so we can simply write 6 one time and then in the value section we can write t1 comma 5 5 is the value that is coming under the a attribute which is from the table 1 and then we can write t2 comma 1 1 is nothing but the value that is coming under the c attribute so i hope the process of converting the records in the form of key value pair is clear to you all in this particular operation so we have successfully converted all the records in the form of key value pairs of map worker 1 now we'll step to map worker 2 so the procedure is very similar you just have to take the common attribute value and you have to put it in the key section and then in the value section you have to write the tuple which contains relation comma the value which comes under the uncommon attribute so let me quickly write it so now you can see that we have successfully converted all the records from the map worker 2 in the form of key value pairs if you guys have any doubt you can put it in the comment section now i hope you all know that once we convert all the records in the form of key value pairs we apply a hash function to it now this hash function is going to divide the entire key value table into two parts so that it can be switched between one of the table from different map workers just to avoid any duplicated key so as you can see the first table contains four records so the four records will be divided into two tables each table will contain two records so let me quickly create the structure of this particular step as you can see each map worker is now containing two key value tables so as per the results that we got from the previous step we have the first record in this manner so we'll write it in the first table similarly we can write the second record also in the first table and now the next two records we need to write in the next table in such manner Similarly, we have to do it for the map worker 2. So map worker 2 contains total 5 records from the previous step. Now in this particular step, the 5 records will be divided in, into 2. The first table will contain total 3 records and the second table will contain total 2 records. So let me quickly write the result for this particular step. So now you can see I have written all the records in this 2 of the map worker 2. So this is the result that we have got after applying the hash function. Now note that the two map worker will always be working independently as well as parallelly. Now in the next step we just have to switch the second table from the first map worker with the first table from the second map worker. This swapping is usually done to avoid any redundant keys that can be present between the two map workers. So in the next step, we just have to switch these two tables and apart from that, everything will be same. And also note one thing that the swapping task will be done with the help of reducer worker. So our map worker will now get converted into reducer worker and will swap one of the table from the first map worker to the other map worker. So let me quickly write the result of the next step. We just have to swap the two tables. So you can see I have just copy pasted the above result and now I will just switch the second table from the first reducer worker with the first table from the second reducer worker and now you can see the result. 
so now if you clearly observe in the first reducer worker we have got two common keys which are three so i hope now you're understanding what is the use of swapping the tables between the map workers and also you can observe that in the reducer worker 2 we have got the key 6 common in both the tables so now what we can do we can just club these two key into a single key and we can club all the values into a single table so now you can see i have just erased the key 3 and the value associated with it from the second table and i have clubbed it with the first table key similarly in the second reducer worker also you need to do the same the value that is associated with the key 6 from the second table of the reducer worker 2 you just have to erase it and then append it in the first table in the value section where the key is 6 so i hope now this particular step is clear now once we are done with this we have to go to the next step and the next step is very simple you just have to club these two key value tables that we have divided into a single key value table for both the reducer workers so let me quickly create the structure for it as you can see previously we had two key value tables in each reducer worker now it will be converted into a single and all the values will be put into a single table without any modification so let me quickly do the particular task so now you can see I have written all the key values from the previous table into a single table. And now in the next step, you need to convert this key value pairs into the original table with attributes A, B and C after joining. So how you need to join? Just carefully look at this. So first we have the key 2 which was coming under the B attribute. So we will write 2 under the B. then t1 belongs to the table 1 and if you remember table 1 contains a attribute so we'll write 1 under a attribute and 3 under c attribute so let me create the structure for the next step this will contain one table in each reducer worker and the table will contain three attributes b a and c so you can clearly see I have created the structure for the next step. Now we'll observe the first record which contains the key 2. If you remember 2 was coming under the B attribute so we'll write under the B attribute since it was the common attribute. Now next we have T1, 1. T1 was belonging to the first table and the first table contained A. So we'll write 1 under the A attribute. Next we have t2, 3. 3 was coming under the c attribute so we'll write it likewise. Next we have the key 3 so we'll write under the b attribute. Next we have t1, 2. So, so now if you clearly observe we have t1 repeating 2 times. So first we'll write 2 under the a attribute and the 4 which is associated with t2 under the c attribute. Now again we have t1 one more time. So for that we will be creating one more record in which the key will be 3 and this 3 will come under b next we'll have t1 comma 6 so we'll write 6 under the a attribute and 4 under the c attribute i hope you are understanding this particular concept now note one thing that whenever you have values which contains only a single relation for example for key 1 you have t1 comma 6 only you don't have t2 so this says that there is no no common attribute between the two tables for this particular key hence we'll discard it similarly for the key 9 we'll discard this particular record so now we are done with the reducer worker 1 similarly we have to do it for the reducer worker 2 you can clearly see that the key 4 and key 7 do not have both the relations t1 and t2 so we will discard this in the final result and now let's focus on the key 6 if you remember key was the b attribute so we will write 6 under the b attribute something like this after writing 6 we will move on to the value section in the value section you have t1 comma 5 so t1 is associated with a so we'll write 5 under a next we have 
52 comma 1 so we'll write 1 under the c attribute now if you clearly observe we have one more t1 tuple so we'll write again one more record for the key 6 so this time it will contain 6 under the b attribute and then since we have t1 comma 7 this time so we'll be writing 7 under the a attribute and after writing 7 if we clearly observe we have t2 comma 1 and you know that c attribute is associated with t2 so we'll write 1 under the c attribute so this is our final result after applying the natural join operation i hope you guys have understood this particular step now if you go with applying the manual method for obtaining the result through natural join operation you will get the same answer as you can see the attribute 2 is common between the two tables so there will be one record for the value 2 now next we have the value 3 which is repeating three times so we'll be having two records for this value 3 similarly we have value 6 repeated three times under the b attribute so we'll be having two records for this particular key 6 so totally we'll be having total five records in the final answer as you can see reducer worker 1 contains 3 and reducer worker 2 contains 2 so our answer is matching with the manual method i hope you guys are clear with every single concept of the map reduce algorithm which has got applied for solving this particular example now in the upcoming video we'll be looking into the last relational algebra operation with the help of the map reduce algorithm which is nothing but grouping and aggregation so stay tuned for that and if you guys have any reviews and suggestions do post it in the comment section for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram thanks a lot for watching